That's the coffee gurgling in the background. There's Vanellope von Schweetz. This is my 16 gallon roomless in the kitchen and all the glare that goes with it on this side, unfortunately. And there's some neons peeking through and red cherry shrimp and one of the little baby, uh, you can't see that because of the glare. One of the little baby uh, albino quarries I released in here, one or two, they're doing fine. Uh, this is the tank I'm adding extra potassium to to try and cure the leaf disorder on the java fern and on showing up on the cryptochorine, this uh, wendy eye, and uh, also on the anubias. But there's other stuff going on in here. This Amazon sword is way too much plant for this little tank, so I've got to take that out. And all this crypt, this started with one crypt, right about there. So I'm trying to figure out a way to beat this glare. And then it has spread little runners all the way across. In fact, now there's a new one way out here. You can just see it right there. And then back in this corner, all the way back there. And I think there's some, there's a, another layer coming up behind too. So I'm going to, I'm not taking the tank apart. I'm just going to pull these out as gently as I can. This is the tank in my office. This is the one with the Mickey Mouse platies in it and a whole bunch of fry and some Blue Dream shrimp. And I'm thinking what I'm going to do with uh, some of the crypts that I take out of that kitchen tank is to put them in here at this end. What I'm going to do is move all the gravel over. It's just gravel. And then lift that uh, sponge filter out of the way. And there's a little baby Blue Dream shrimp in here and little tiny uh, Mickey Mouse platies and try not to kill them all. I'm going to put pool sand under here, plant the crypts, put the gravel back on top of the sand, and we'll see how that goes. So I'm moving the hornwort out of the way right now. Got my handy dandy ice scraper. Something I learned from another YouTuber, he was putting sand in a water bottle and then putting water in on top of the sand and literally just pouring the sand where he wants it. So that's what I'm going to do with this measuring cup. I'm going to let it fill with water and then I should be able to get the horn ward out of there pour it slowly because there's shrimp that migrated back in there and I don't want to bury the little buggers but you can see how well that just pours out you can pretty much put it right where you want it now there's a heater there but it hasn't been plugged in since probably the beginning of summer all right so let's pull this out Add some more sand to it. There we go. And once again, just let it fill. And this is just regular old pool sand, so it's clean. Don't need to rinse it, and I love that. So yeah, maybe it's a little more expensive than builder's sand at the home center. And it's a different color too. It's it's more of a gray, whiter gray than the brown. But I like the way it works. All right, I think I'm gonna add just a little more and let it butt right up to the gravel. I don't imagine you can get the pool sand at a home center. I got it at the local pool supply. Might be cheaper at the home center. So the next step then is to go collect some of those crypts and we'll plant those in there. And then after they're planted, 
I'll put the gravel back on top, and if I need more gravel to do it, I'll get some out of the garage. And uh, then I'll probably put pieces of API root tabs down in the root zone, because there are no nutrients in the sand, plenty in the water. Trying to get rid of the glare, and that is just not gonna happen. But these are the cryptocorians we're gonna try and rescue and put in another tank. Got to thin this batch out. I'm going to start with this little one way over here. And look at that. They are all interconnected. So I'm just working my finger underneath them and nudging them out of the substrate. And they're coming out relatively easily. There's some big ones back here. That's a whole new runner root right there with that little white nodule on the end. That's gonna be a whole new plant. I'm trying to see, I wish I could do something about the glare, but mostly stuck with it. I'm gonna leave the one big original plant. There's a nice lot of crypts right there. Leave the big one behind, replant that big one. It's gonna look pretty bleak on this side for a while. Now I'm pinching it with my middle finger, index finger, and thumb, and I'm just sort of wiggling it down into the substrate. I'm holding it there, and then I'm bringing sand and gravel back around the, that root ball, well, that root mass. And then we just gotta let this settle back. I think that big long root is from the philodendron on the other end. Just gonna bust that out of the way. And then here's another crypt root, this big white one with another plant nodule on the end. And I think what I'm gonna do with those is just throw them in a tub of water and they should probably grow like that. So this is still a little loose, so I'm gonna push that in a little more without planting a shrimp. And then what I'm gonna do, I think I've got a bunch of Sagittarius subulata, and I'm gonna put that along, fill in this area right here. So this is the harvest. There are 21 of them. And that plant's been in the tank for about a year, because uh, I think that uh, Bulbitis that was in there was in there, I don't know, six, eight months. But there's some, some pretty nice ones here. And this is Crypt Wendii red or brown or bronze, and I don't remember exactly which one they called it. But it's got a, it's really a lovely purple color. It's nice. So I'm going to go plant a bunch of those in the other tank. You know, while I'm at it, I think I'll throw a couple pieces of Jungle Val in there too. So I'm going to grab, I think, a couple of those uh, Jungle Vals in the front there that have runnered their way under that log. And then maybe they're gonna be small, so I don't know, we'll see, we'll see what comes out. Uh, and then I gotta stick my arm in there with these guys. All right, everybody out of the pool, here we go. There we go. Uh, there's two, two real nice pieces. Let's get, hey, 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 hey. They're trying to eat my arm. Oh, look, and there's a bud 
on the end of that, I'm gonna shoot into a new plant. So that's three. And just, you know, anything worth doing is worth overdue. I was gonna take these out of the front, wasn't I? That one's just loose. Nothing holding it. So I don't think I'm gonna use that one, but I will use this one that's coming from the back there. And I just dislodged that little crypt. So we'll uh, see if we can reinstall it a little bit. A lot of gravel that it's trying to root through. A lot of, a lot of mom in there too. Um, it's been a weird tank. There's been, uh, there's a little piece of Java fern. Let's uh, just float around. We'll throw that in somewhere else and it'll just float around and keep growing. Um, so let's grab a couple of these against the wall over here. Go away. There we go. There's a nice one. And there's a couple right along the glass. I'm going to leave those. And a couple that are just a little further in, I'm going to take those. So there's two more and a piece of water lettuce and a piece of Ricky water spangles. Okay, so this little piece of Valsen area that doesn't seem like it's got a lot going for it. I'm just gonna throw that and that little piece of Java fern in this tank with all these little, those guys, the Mickey Mouse platy fry. And then we'll take these pieces of uh, jungle bell and we will plant them in the other tank. All right, all right, we're back uh, in my office into this 20. And I'm gonna plant these vowels. Oh, look, there's two, all right, runnered with another uh, little bud on the end there. And let's see, three, four, Five, this is the end of a runner. And six, also the end of a runner. So I'm going to plant these. We'll clean them up a little bit, I guess. Anything that falls off doesn't need to be there. I'm going to leave this really long set of leaves on this one. They're 18 inches, maybe 24 inches. And I'll plant these up against the back wall here. Because this is this tank's almost like a peninsula tank. Uh, the way it sticks out into the room. My desk is on the other side. I walk in from this side and we can see the end as well. I'm going to put the sponge filter back where, where I think I wanted it. Probably back in that same corner. And we'll start, we'll start over here. And then again, after they're all planted, I'll put, um, I'll put API root tabs in the area. I'll break them up into quarter tabs and then just put them in the area. And there's another runner just starting to come off of this. So these, I keep saying that, don't I? The gift that keeps on giving, they're wonderful. I like the clumping, The you know, the, I think I, I heard them referred to as root plants. I mean, you know, even stem plants have roots, but these tend to be uh, kind of a fibrous root mass. They're grass-like. I don't think they are, they're not in the grass family, but they are grass-like. That sets them apart from the plants that have uh, branching roots. These just have, the analogy I used to use in my classes was the root system on these is like a mop head. There's lots of long, essentially long straight roots uh, that don't branch. Well, there we are. Got all the valcinaria in there, this jungle val. I did a video on this not too long ago uh, kind of an update video. I originally bought it, God, I think it was April last year, and it took a while. It was in a different tank, and it wasn't doing well in that tank, or maybe I was just impatient. And then I moved it into the tank we just pulled these pieces out of, and it went nuts eventually. But eventually, it didn't do it right away. It took a while. So now I'm going to start planting these. And I don't know how many I'm going to put in their mass, probably. But we've got bigger wads of roots. So I'm just going to kind of, kind of wad them up to make them a little easier to deal with. We'll start with in front of the sponge filter. And I'm pushing those roots all the way down to the glass at the bottom. 
and in a couple days they will write themselves in the meantime they're going to look a little floppy but they'll be all right they've been submerged the whole time so i'm going to try and plant them a little bit irregular so it doesn't look like they're just in crop rows this is a nice big one and if we get a little sand up over the crown where the leaves meet the roots it's not going to hurt anything with landscape plants you don't want to do that but with an aquatic plant it's usually not a big deal and this will also kind of double as a farm tank so they'll keep going they'll make more and i what did i say i had 21 plants here and i think what i'm going to do is plant i don't know however many here six eight something like that and maybe put the rest on my ebay store so i need some other inhabitants in this tank also i gotta get i've got some uh auto sync in another tank so i don't have any algae eaters in here other than the blue dream shrimp and uh i'll put um if i can find some cords also and then I was just watching this video the other day. Another Australian fish keeper did a great, Blake's Aquatics, did a great uh, video on something, Aspidoras. They're, I guess they're a cousin to the Corydora. They're cool looking little fish. So if I can find some of them, that would be cool. They don't eat their eggs. In fact, the tank that these crypts just came out of I noticed they spawned today, and by the time I, I noticed it, there were just like empty egg husks on the glass. So miss that. And once these establish, they'll give all these little baby uh, Mickey Mouse platies a little extra cover. Not that they need it. That's one thing I've noticed, that the, the adult Mickey Mouse platies do not seem to eat their fry, which is kind of nice. I'm going to see if I can spread some of this gravel amongst the plants. Well, there it is, a cloudy mess, and I think that'll do it. I'm just going to go float these extra cribs. Um, and I think I'll use a little bit of the API AccuClear in this tank too. And I also have an extra hang on back filter. So I will put that in here just to suck up all this extra mold that's floating around. See if we can clean this tank up just a bit. So I got an extra AquaClear. Put that on. And. I just use the filter floss because when I was using the sponges, if they got dirty, they'd float out and I'd get water all over the place. So I just accordion fold it back and forth, drop that in this, whatever this is called. Then in the interest of not sucking up any baby shrimp or uh, baby fish, a pre-filter, prime it. Plug it in, should get going, and there it is. And that is essentially how I thinned out way too much cryptocorine in one tank, spread it in another, and before too, too long, it should make way more than we know what to do with in this tank. And after it all clears, I'll be able to see where I need to add more gravel Dropped a couple leaves from that dried up from a money plant uh, in the living room. That's the Ricky water spangles here. And a little fry. So they're proof there's not that much cover. And they are proof that the parents just don't eat the fry. They might if they're really hungry. But, and I only feed every couple days. But you can see all the stuff in the water here. And yeah, I'm sure you can't see it. You might be able to, but it's working its way towards the intake. So this is going to sludge up. The pre-filter will get really fouled first. I'll rinse that a couple times. 
some of the finer particles will go through it and end up in this uh, filter floss and uh, but it'll clear it'll clear this whole thing out in relatively no time now once the water clears I'll put the fertilizer tabs in so you guys can see how I do that all right well it's been three days we left off it was Friday and now uh, it is Monday afternoon I put that hang on back filter on this to uh, kind of clear up a lot of the moment there's still a lot of mom in the gravel I remember that layer of uh, pool sand down there has no nutrients in it other than the mom that's going to sift down into it um, we put the layer of jungle val across the back and I think, I don't remember if there were four pieces or five pieces, maybe three. And then out of all that crip that we harvested out of the other tank, there were 21 pieces, I believe. And I put, I don't know, about, about nine or 10 of them in here, fairly close together. Um, they were kind of lean and lopsided when we planted them. And so was the uh, jungle val. All of everything sort of straightened up. And then I said, what we'll do, since there's no nutrients, in pool sand on its own is we'll put uh, root tabs down around the the roots and now I'm not going to stick one at every plant what I'll do is put them between groups of plants and that should do what well, just fine uh, I, I've broken uh, uh, API root tabs into quarter pieces and I'll just take them in the tongs here and stuff them down in the sand down between you know, groups of three or four plants, uh, roots will find them. And that's really all that's important. I'll put some between the back row of the jungle val and that last row of crypts that's back there. I don't know how many we're gonna use. And this is not rocket science, nor does it need to be. I'm just trying to keep them sort of individually spaced. And again, just quarter pieces. Um, a lot of times I'll just snap them in half by hand. This time I used a straight edge or single edge razor blade and, and they cut pretty, you know, that's a rock. They cut pretty evenly. Um, occasionally they kind of crumble. I don't worry about it. All the dusty bits I save. And then when I do uh, a dry planting, I will just sprinkle all the fertilizer granules just in the substrate around where I'm going to end up planting. And I also just put in a five Sagittarius subulata across, across the front here. Um, I'll put a little more cover in here. I'm not sure, but I think I saw one of the Mickey Mouse platies uh, chomp on one of the little Mickey Mouse platies this morning. So I thought, well, you know, a little more cover is okay. I could take these two pieces of driftwood out. One's got a Nubius on it. The other has uh, uh, this bulbitis, uh, window of Java fern, and, and a narrow leaf Java fern just glued to this piece of wood. But I'm just going to leave leave those in here. Oh, one of those little Sagittaria came out, and then I've also got this uh, this pot full of crips. There's some really tiny ones in here, so they are still spawning. And, and this population looks like it grew over the weekend. And then later, I will come back with. Uh, a liquid fertilizer. I'm using a the Easy Green right now, and I'll, I'll put a couple pumps of that in here, and maybe a little bit of the the liquid carbon help the plants grow. Remember, there's Blue Dream Shrimp in here, and I think I saw an orange sunkist in here as well. I don't know how that would have gotten in here, uh, but I pulled a big red one out the other day. Um, so I think I might pull the Blue Dream Shrimp out of here, and I wanted to get some. Uh, green jade shrimp, so I might end up putting those in this tank and keep them separate from the Blue Dream. I'll just put them back in the tank they came from. But anyway, that's uh, that's this tank. That's uh, the crypts we harvested out of another tank. The Sagittarius subulata that I harvested out of another tank. Um, the jungle vowel out of a third tank. And then uh, there's hornwort floating around the top here, and I threw a couple leaves in. There's also something called Rickia water spangles floating around on the top of this. It's a cool little floater plant, and it'll eventually take over if I'm not careful. 
Uh, and so far, no duckweed. And then I threw a couple leaves in. Uh, they're softening. And they're pretty much down to nothing now. The shrimp will work on those. And I've only got one or two bladder snails in here. And every time I see one, I take it out. Uh, this tank was inundated with snails. And I pretty much got them beat now. Uh, it just takes persistence. So anyway... That's where this is so far. And I think there was something else I wanted to do to this tank. So let me see if I can figure that, figure out what that is. So I think the next thing we want to do is harvest some more Sagittarius subulata out of another tank and put it in the, t in the kitchen tank where all these crypts came from. Kind of fill that in a little bit. Uh, and they'd be a little more to scale in that smaller tank. And then, especially in the tight spot that, that there is in that tank and then also i was thinking about see if we can pull some auto out of another tank and we'll put them into this tank so i'm going to put some sagittarius subulata right in here i got this from another tank it spreads by runners spreads fast I've got i don't know half a dozen seven or eight plants here i put two batches of four in this little cube tank i have and they've completely taken over along the edge of the glass. So what I do, I'll just try and bunch up the roots a bit and we'll put it down in the front here. Give it a little twist. I always have a problem with this. It always wants to pop back out. So I'm not any good at this. I'm sure you'll see people that are a lot better, a lot more experienced at it probably. I'm sure there's little tips and tricks. And then after I'm done, we'll put some fertilizer tabs in here too. Yep, that's it. There's a little piece of guppy grass left and I'm not gonna put that in there. So, piece of uh, API root tab, shove it down in there. It's a little close. I was kind of hoping to spread these out a little more. There, that should do. And there we go. And we'll do a follow-up on that a couple months from now to see just how well that's grown in. Doesn't look like much right now. Within a week or so, it'll settle in. They'll look like they're, they're taking. All right, so instead of the auto sinkless, I've got... 10 or 11 in a tank, but to get to them, I'm gonna to to take the tank apart. And I thought, you know, we'll do that another time, then we'll just add these. But in the meantime, I've got five bronze quarry juveniles that came out of another tank. And so they're a good cleanup crew. So we'll put those in here and let them wander around. And then we'll try and get all the Blue Dream shrimp out of here in the meantime. And they can go back in uh, the Blue Dream shrimp tank in the garage. And then I'm gonna, like I said, I'll put some uh, uh, the green, green jade, green jade uh, neocaridina in here. I think I see four of the shrimp right there. They'll be easy picking. Well, they won't, none of these are easy pickings. But uh, let's, uh, I'm gonna net the shrimp out, or the quarries out. Here we go. There they are. That's three of them. The other two scooted out right away. So I found a few more. I think I got 14 now. So there will probably be more. And there's even an even smaller one right there at the top. So as always, I appreciate y'all being here and thanks for watching.